Hello and greetings everybody, Crusader Kings 3 is finally out and we are going to jump right into a new game. I'm so excited for it, I was waiting so long for this beautiful game, one of the biggest strategy games that I anticipated this year. And here we are, well, what can we do? We can start with one of the Dukes or Emirs or whatever, but we're going to start of course with the Vikings. Now we do have 5, 6 eras available that we can start with. The Wrath of the Northmen, the Great Adventurers, the Carolingians, the Fate of England, Rax, Riches and Iberian Pieces. All of them start in different ages, different times and with different kings and chieftains. But of course we're starting with the very first one. We want to start as basic as it can get to build up our empire. We're starting in 867, Wrath of the Northmen it is. So that's the Vikings. We're going to choose not one of these because they have predefined traits and predefined difficulties and stuff like that. We're going to play as any ruler in 860. This is the most important thing and it well jumps right into the world map as we can see and we can start with one of the rulers We're going to jump up here to Norway, which is not kingdom of Norway yet, right? We have Great Britain, which is not great and nor British We do have the Roman Empire, which is not a holy Roman Empire yet, which is only East Frencher and West Frencher so very basic early Europe medieval time and down here just in the midst of it we got Horda Filki and Horda Filki with Chieftain Ariker is going to be our starting point and from here we take our adventure from here we're going to, to unite Norway and raid as many countries as possible let's start all right and here we are in the game already we're starting as chieftain iriker of horda filki and uh, we are the chieftain of the Hordaland, which is kind of like in the middle of norway kind of in the middle of the lower part and as we can see we're starting in the year 867 so yeah Europe looks a bit different. We don't have the Holy Roman Empire yet. It's called East French, for example. We have Italy down here. Um, we have Venice as a special city that we have. Then we have Ireland and Great Britain. And yeah, still no Kingdom of Norway as well. So we're really starting in the beginning of everything as early as you can in this game. Chieftain Eiriker here is has one goal. He has a goal to unite Norway. That is his goal. But first of all, we are, well, just a little tribal... Um, chieftain anywhere in Norway. We don't even have any true ambitions so far. We only know that we are a king deep in our bloods, <laughs> if that makes sense. Now, the first thing that we need to do here right away is, while the game is still on pause, is, well, we do need to get a lifestyle. Lifestyle is very important in Crusader Kings 3, as this defines how your character kind of like behaves in this game. Of course, as we can see, the pure lifestyle here is that we have beautiful beautiful long blonde hair but of course we cannot just have this one as our only um, lifestyle choice the other one is that we need to be someone we need to be a fighter in this game of course we are vikings so we have the martial focus as is we could also go with diplomacy that would give us good um tools to have good diplomacy with our vassals with our neighbors stewardship for money intrigue for schemes and everything about that we're going to have a let's play of this as well and learning is something where yeah you can be very religious and stuff like that. But we're going with martial skill. And once again, if we choose that, we have to choose another of focus. And that is the strategy focus, authority or chivalry focus. Um, they define how good you are, for example, in battle, like the chivalry focus. Or how, cool in, how good in general you are as a strategist. This gives you the maximum of martial skills that you have. And martial is very important as this dictates how good your armies are in battle. Now we're going with the strategy focus. As we can see, martial plus three. And I already love that, so we are starting with a character that has nothing. I mean, I think we are 17 years old. We are freshly married, you know, there we have her, Sophia. And that is our spouse, my wife. As we can see, she's a, a salad, a righteous one. She is humble, zealous, and just. So actually, she does have good traits here. And she is intrigued. She has, she's an elusive shadow, so she's focusing on intrigue. We are impatient. That is pretty bad. We are wrathful. This gives us though uh, some martial skills and temperate as well. So, <laughs> how does this go? Impatient and temperate, but in that case, yeah, it gives us a bonus to stewardship and small boost to our income of taxes. So we do have a tax income of 1.2, and we are literally living here as barbarians. We only have one tribal village, that is Bjorgvin, and Bjorgvin doesn't really do anything. It's in the taiga terrain, 
Um, we have a supply limit of 3,000. You know, it's really just a small village with nothing. So if you watched my Dawn of Man series, then this is how the city would look like at the end of the game, I guess. You know, so we're really just having a little tribal village there. And our goal is, well, once again, to get rid of all of them. Now, let's have a look what our neighbors are. We have Chieftain of Rukia, let's call him that. And Chieftain Hugra, uh, Hellyar skin, is one of our first... I guess targets that we have uh, to the north we have the chieftain of Zoggen and there we have then elf gear he's pretty old and he does have those three children so in that regard what I want to do first is let's have a look at my council there we have my council very important the council we have of course our wife as our assist ruler and since she's pretty good with intrigue we might just give us some intrigue rating she's also good at martial skill though so while that is not her best trade i'm going with the chivalry because this gives us another plus four martial skills we have our um godi our gratter gratter that we have there um, and he would then improve our religious relationships or he would give us a fabricate on a claim. And I like this new one, this new tactic. So this is new. So our religious courtyard, he, council, he can actually fabricate a claim on a county. Very important. We cannot do that yet because we don't have the money really. But I'm going with that at some point. Now, the next one is my chancellor. He needs to be good at diplomacy. Let's just check if we don't have another that is badger suited. Nope. So he's pretty good for that. And we can go with him with domestic affairs. So we have good relationships with our vassals. I don't care about my neighbors at the moment. My steward, money-wise, 9. We have him with 10, but let's not, you know, get him angry or something like that. Collecting taxes is the best he can do. Organize the levels with the marshal is the most important thing right now. Because we need to go um, starting with the raiding. Also, our spy master Raphael that we have here, um, disrupt schemes at the moment, is cool. But I don't think that there are so many schemes lying around. So what I want to do is I want him to find secrets up here in Song, right? So this would be one of our targets in the future. And if we find a secret against him, we might use it against him, something like that. Who knows? Right, those are the people that are working for us right now. And then in the middle, we have us. Let's unpause the game and just see how it goes. We do have an army of 400 at the moment available to us, right? So 400 it is, that's our military strength. It isn't bad, it isn't very good either. Let's have a look at our neighbors. He's got 300, Sogn here got 300 as well, and Chieftain gained military presence of five years. That is my marshal, so a pretty good one, right? Um, we do have a son, Ericsson, so Bjorn, he's called. Um, Bjorn, of course, he's starting, yeah, very humble. He's got blonde hair, so there might be a career for long blonde hair in the future. And in that case, we could arrange a m marriage already with him. But let's educate the child. Every child needs an education, and it's us. So we are the guardian as well. We're kind of like the father. We are the father. So in that case, let's educate him. This, of course, will give us some points that we have, some traits that we have. We give them to our son. And that is especially the prowess and our martial skill of 22, which is insane. All right, a few other things. So we are just setting up uh, things here now to have a decent game then. Let's have a look at our issues. I like that as well, so that we have now a map with issues. And for example, we have a suggestion that we could get a claim. We could fabricate a claim. We could send our chaplain to create a, or my realm priest to fabricate a claim, which is totally fine. So if we, for example, get a claim then down here on this county or on this chieftain, um, if the chieftain dies and his sons die with, for example, intrigue, we would get the claim then, or we just fight him military-wise. Um, since we're Norsemen, we're not really that good at intrigue. We're rather just good at, you know, smashing heads, and that's exactly what my goal is. Um, still, we want to use those schemes for that. Not endorsed by my goatee is another thing. That is, though, that is a bit problematic, though. There we have him, and he doesn't like us particularly. Let's have a look at him. Learning, he's pretty good. Can we do something with him? We could sway him, improving our opin uh, his opinion of us. That would be our first scheme. It has a pr uh, chance of 50%. Let's start the scheme. Um, and let's use my Spy Master to support the scheme. Alright, so he's coming back. Because he needs to support us here, the Godi. Otherwise, we cannot get the maximum amount of levies from him. We could also give him a gift. That would give us 12. And this will increase the opinion by 7. But 12 is just a harsh price when we only have 16. Not something that I would particularly like right now. So let's just stay happy with the, the stuff that we have. We could, of course, also have a look. Look at that. We got some very good training, learning people here. 13. 
if we get her, we would probably get an even better. I don't know. Let's just say like that. We can also declare war on six people. The cool thing about the Norsemen and Vikings is that we don't really need a claim, right? We can just subjugate our people, our enemies. So in this case, he, he's an enemy. I could declare war on him now with the goal of subjugation, right? It's that simple if I had the prestige. But right now, I don't want to do that. We finally want to do something. It's too much talking. What we want to do is we want to raid. Now for raiding... Let's have a look at our military. We have an army of 400, but that is not enough. I want to create some further men at arms, right? We do have 450 prestige. This is basically our main currency as a Viking, the prestige. And we want to get our first soldiers up there. We have the armored footmen. They're really strong. So they're probably the most or the strongest that you can have, but also the most expensive one. Horsemen, very good, but very bad in certain terrains that are predominant, like the mountains. Not something that I would get. The light footman is good in forest, tiger, and jungle. So basically in forest and tiger, that's the most predominant um, area that we have. The pikeman would probably be good. Yeah, mountains, hills, and desert. Uh, armored footman, they have no terrain effect. Pretty cool. Let's go with the light footman as, as starters. And probably also a second one for the bowmen. Right, so that we get a few bowmen there as well to fight for us. Right, so we have two now. That, of course, drops our prestige there a bit. Um, we need to wait now because they need to replenish. They're building up now. Um, as long as I didn't raise them, they don't cost me that much. Right? They cost me 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 prestige at the moment. As we can see, it is going down because of that. But other than that, what I can see, we're fine at the moment. Right? Let's, let's let them kind of like grow into something. And as we can see, they're growing. Alright, and after a bit of time, we finally have a full army. They have fully replenished now, and we can raise them all as raiders. And there they are, my first raider army. 600 soldiers it is. We have five champions on board as well. The commander is us right now, which is good because we have a high martial skill, so we are really good at that. Um, and I think it's a good time to start raiding. Now, raiding, basically wherever we go, we can raid and get the money out. Um, and in Crusader Kings 3, we have a little comfortable feature there, a comfort feature. We can mouse over a ter terrain and can see how much money we get out of it. Here we get 15 out of it, for example. Here we get 15. Um, if we check then how many people there are, 300, then it's basically a good idea to go there first, right? He doesn't like us anyway. So let's just go down there and raid the terrain of our neighbors. A good thing about that as well is that they get weakened by that. So future wars against them might make a good positive change towards us. Right, no factions at the moment, that is fine. And we are just now going down here. And there we are, we are raiding. And that's basically it, we get raided. We got 15 gold out of it, no event. There is a very high chance that you get events out of the raids. Other than that, not that much happening. Down here we have the tribe of Arendelle. They have 260 levies, so also that would be fine for us to raid. Let's go over there and raid. As we can see, it is now raiding time. And this is resulting in a bit of looting. Alright, there is something. Fire and blood, the settlement of Telemark. An important stronghold in Greater Telemark has fallen to my raiders. We have the run of vast tracts of land and many of the quivering subjects and shining treasures of Chieftain Royalt to choose from. The troops stand ready, awaiting my command. Bring me bounteous plunder. This would give um, 30 coin and 75 prestige. Oh, we've taken already, of course not. Bring me the plunder. This is now quite a nice event. At least we didn't die from it and we can continue. Right now we are just raiding our neighbors. Not the nicest thing in the world. And hopefully we don't suffer. Oh, you will... Oh, yeah. My Gregor, Gregor is not swayed by my schemes. So unfortunately I cannot do anything there. Um, we still have a good army. And we raided Fire and Blood once again. And we can say bring us the the bounches plunder so if this happens we get a bit more out of it you know so it's better than dying there might also be then the oh the dying event there is that is too far away so this would give us um this would bring us to the supply limit so let's get down here um more levies so this is only the start right now All right oh we're full we're full anyway we need to get back we are full. We have 58 coin and quite a lot of prestige there as well. And our first raid has been completed. And with that, we've also gained another experience points now, a point now for Chief Ariker. So let's just have a look at that. As you can see, Strategist Overseer Gallant. We can choose one of these. Let's have a look. 
the strategy is that Balum Kazu's Belly doesn't uh, cost me 50% less, which is good because it costs a lot, 500 prestige last time I checked, quite a lot. Um, Surf the Crown, Natural Dread plus 15, and Stalwart Leader, we get another prowess bonus of plus 4, um, but I guess we go with the strategy so Kazu's Belly costs us less. And this will get us then down here to uh, the strategist tree, as we can see. So, for example, naval speed plus 25%, which is very important as well for the raids. Uh, movement speed plus 15%. And down here, even go to heavy infantry, siege progress. So, everything about this tree here, I like. Alright, and we're back home. We get 58 coin and 58 prestige out of our latest tra raid. And also we got Ransom, so we do have a few people now in our prison, let's have a look at that. And there we have him, he's Oystein, and he's in prison right now for 8 months already, boy that's a long time. He hates us for it, we could um, execute him, negotiate a release or Ransom him, let's have a look how, money, how much money, 10 money. What is he? Is he some someone? He's unmarried, he's not the chief of anything, so he's pretty bad overall. Let's just get rid of him, get the money, we will accept for it, and in that case, 10 coin is ours. Alright, and I do need to do something about my Gretcher here, and in that case, he still doesn't like me, my schemes are not good, um, and this results in a penalty with levies and taxes, so let's get another one. Arn Bjorn here, for example, he's at minus 10, he's very good at learning, so if we get him, he might actually change towards us, let's do that. And there he is, right? So he's... Yeah. Oh, now we have a penalty once again. Because why is that penalty now happening? No idea. Perhaps I could give him something. Yeah, he takes a gift. We still have a penalty though. He doesn't endorse us at the moment. Alright, can I do anything about that? So what I can do though is raiding and getting more prestige out of that. So let's start raiding the Orkney Islands that we have. So the Orkney Islands, as we can see, their loot is... Oh, actually? Nope, there is not much loot. There is loot that we can get in, on the Shetland, right? The Orkney Islands have recently been pillaged already, as we can see. Recently have been raided. My son and heir Bjorn is an, an unusual calm child. When the others play their wild games, Bjorn often withdraws to some silent corner. He does not speak a lot, but I can tell he's always thinking about something. Okay, he gets the trade pensive. That gives him stewardship and learning. Oh, that's nice. I like my son already. Speaking of sons, we do have one right now. We do have a wife. We should get us a concubine though, because that gives us a prestige bonus. Right now we get a penalty because we don't have a concubine. And Ulf Hildr. She's one of my courts. Let's have a look. She's lustful. That's pretty good. Just and vengeful. Um, she's got 10 martial skills, so that's fine for me. Let's take her. And there we got the first one. And as we can see, my prestige penalty is gone, and I actually do have a plus zero right now. So that is fine. Having a prestige is expected of a chief then. We are raiding once again. Now, fire and blood, bring me the bounteous plunder once again. Very good. That is the one that we are, yeah, raiding right now. Chieftain Einar, he doesn't seem to be too happy. And we do get money and prestige. And, oh, the Gretcher gained 25 opinion of you because of our raiding. Um, let's just have a look. So, we are positive now with him. And that means that... This one, at least, likes us so far. We still have to collect taxes, trade on him. Very good. I like that. So, that is happening. And let's continue, I think. Yep, let's continue to... This island up here, the Ferrer Islands. And, yeah, also weak enemies in that case. We can just go over there. What else happens? Organized service we gain because... Oh, yeah, I was doing it. Did a good job there. And we get plus five taxes. We still have positive tax balance despite having an army race right now. That is, yeah, nice. I, I didn't think that that is possible, actually. In the latest kingdom, it wasn't. Up here, we have the we have Iceland. So, they might be stronger. Even though there is even nothing here. But there is loot waiting. Yep, there is plenty of loot waiting. We should be doing that. While we continue with the raiding, let's see what we can do back home. Because, of course, I also want to develop my country, my Holder Fjord. And in that case, as we can see, we have one holding. 
the other holdings are empty at the moment. We could put something there later. Right now, there's nothing to construct, though, because we just haven't gone that far, right? But in our main village, we could do something already. So since the whole chieftain belongs to us, when we build a building here that is strong enough, it supports the whole chieftain, so it gets a bonus to the other region there as well. If we lo would lose one region, like this one, for example, that or this barony here, then we would lose the bonus. So... Right now, we do have the bonus since we get everything and we could construct something. I mean, we do have a bit of money. We do have prestige. So it might be a good idea to start constructing something. Now, what I like the most out of these buildings that we have, we have the palisades, the war camps, the gathering halls and the markets. What I like the most is actually the war camps because this gives us another knight. Knights are an extremely powerful unit that you have in your armies and the more knights you have, the better it is for the outcome of your battles, of course. It also gives us plus 150 levies in addition and heavy infantry bonus. We don't have any heavy infantry that much yet. We also have the gathering hall. This gives me a bit of prestige per month. Wouldn't be so bad, but we get prestige and money from raiding right now. So I don't want to have a building that focuses on that as well. For example, the markets. So actually, let's go with the, the, the war camps. Um, uh, takes five years after all. I can afford it and it gives me a better army there. There we have it, and it is being now constructed. Now we could um, we could in increase the, the speed of that by having one of my, I think my chancellor it was. Nope, there it is, the steward. We could have him working on development in county. So this would give the construction a bit of a bonus. So if we put him there now, we would lose zero, uh, 0 0.1 taxes. But on the other hand, I think this would be fast enough, four years left. So it's a year faster, at least, out of the, the five years that it takes. Was it, was it a year? I don't know. We'll see about that. Development is important anyway, because we want to develop our country, our counties then. Let's have a look at rating. I think he's finished. Yes, we are almost full again. Oh, Iceland is stronger. In Iceland, we do have Chieftain Garder. And he's got 500 people, actually. Not the best idea most likely so what i could do is i could get back home i think so and yeah just get the money there and then we continue on to ireland so we would be the first to raid ireland and that's just how history goes right a bit early perhaps oh when this way Intrigue is happening right now to take my steward Grudger more susceptible to my attempts at approaching him I can include a compliment in my next missive at his court um, Unshakable faith in Odin Grudger gains 10 opinion of you All right, we do have yeah, let's take this one. I think this is fine now actually I don't know if I really want to go a recent correspondence has been a source of joy for me I cannot help but think that we might both benefit from increased communication. I think so too, right? I'm your chief It might be extremely important for us to benefit from increased communication Let's take this into effect. So at least someone likes me. He likes me. This guy here still doesn't like me We do have a bit of money, but we have recently already sent him a gift. So that is not possible right now um but instead of raiding, since, well, everything has been kind of raided, there are actually battles being fought right now on my territory. What I want to do is I want to gain some additional land. That might be a good idea for us. So let's have a look at my Song that we have here. Song that we have the chieftain. And he is at war right now with someone. Yeah. Oh, and he's also allied with those guys. But they're also pretty weak. This guy down here to the south... Chieftain Hellier skin. He is attacking someone right now. He's got a weak army. Let's go with him. Oh, right. I need to, to lay down my, my army right now because they're standing. And then, once I've, I've done that, we can actually declare war on him. I hope so, at least. Subjugate him. It co Oh, it costs us 250 prestige. We don't have that at the moment. We don't have the money for that. Invade the kingdom. Raid for captives. We could do that. We could captive him, captivate him, or we could conquer a dutch. We could afford that, right? County a dutch, uh, a county, a smaller one. But I'm in for the whole chieftain, so let's do some raiding. And once that is done, we might then actually continue. So in that case, we do need a bit more prestige out of the raiding. 
Right, so I'm going with some raid, get some achieve, uh, get some prestige there, and then we can finally start conquering the southern neighbor here. My court seems happy, I'm 21 by now, um, my child is blooming, and my, yeah, hopefully wife is not doing anything against me, she is an elusive shadow after all, but so far so good, um, hopefully we can continue with this and unite Norway, stay tuned.